portion starts with the Hebrew words shelach lecha. Shelach lecha. What shelach lecha means? Send or send for yourself. Hmm. Or send you. And we learn from this that the idea of sending spies did not come from the Lord. <gasps> Why you say that? If the Torah says, send me spies. But the Hebrew words, shalach, shalach, lecha, means send by yourself. You want, you have that idea? Okay, send it. But by your own risk. That's what that means. In the book of Deuteronomy, you see how I can say Deuteronomy now? <laughs> if you can help me, guys, right there. It says, and every one of you came near to me and say, let us send men before us. Let us send and let, let them search out the land for us and bring back word to us of the way by which we should go out and of the cities into which we shall come. Let us send. It wasn't the original idea of Adonai. It was the idea of the people of Israel. Sending spies is a, is a sign of lack of trust in Hashem, in Adonai. The natural mind normally wants to be sure of the circumstances before making a decision. The security that comes from natural circumstances is deceptive. But the security that comes from the promises of the, the Lord is firm and does, does not fail. Even though Moshe liked the suggestion, we can see how deeply spiritual he was since he did not send the spies without first asking Adonai. Adonai agreed to the suggestion and commanded, and this is written in verse 3. This is a commentary of, of Stephan. In Numbers th chapter 13, verse 3 says, So Moshe sent them from the wilderness of Paran according to the command of the Lord. And all of them, men who were heads of the children of Israel. This, we have read what will happen with them. And they were heads of the children of Israel. They were not uh, other people, normal people. They were leaders. They were leaders. It's supposed to be mature people from every tribe. Strong people. But when they get there, they... Start to fear. But uh, the Lord never commanded them to, to send spies. Sometimes there are plans that we want in the hardness, uh, hardness of our hearts that the Lord concedes. But are not the original plans that he has for us. Sometimes we don't want to wait. And the Lord says, okay, you know, let me help you. No, I want to do it. Okay, go ahead. Do it. I want to do it myself. Do it. I create you with freedom. Just go ahead and do it. And we can see that after they knew that the Lord was with Caleb and Joshua, you know, after they knew that it was a, a, a big mistake to say that the land is no good, that there is giants and whatever right there, they said, no, no, no. When they said, when they saw that uh, Caleb and Yeshua bring the good report and the, they saw that the Lord was with them, they said, okay, let's take the land. The Lord said, no, it's too late. But that's, that's the land that you promised for us. Yes, that's the land that I promised for you. I gave you that promise. Yeah, it's the will of God, but it's not the right time to do it. So it's not only the will of, willing of God that we have to do, but the right time to do it. So that was late. And you see, they, they were there and they, they get uh, uh, defeated. They pushed them back, the enemy. Hmm. Now, Shilach Lecha. When you see the portion of the parashat that we study, there is another portion, only two portions, has the word Shilach. Or lecha, I'm sorry. Lecha means uh, send or go. 
So the first one, the first portion is in the, in the book of Genesis chapter 12 that says, Lecha, Lech Lecha. You know, remember when Abraham, no God, and the Lord says to Abraham, Lech Lecha. What that means, leave everything that you have. Everything that you have. And go to the land that I'm going to show you. Leave everything. He was able to go without knowing, knowing nothing. So the other part in the Torah, the, the other portion where you find the, the word lecha is here. Shelach lecha, where the Lord says to Moses, send by yourself. But it's a different attitude. Different thing. Moshe depart from, uh, 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 Abraham depart from uh, Ur, Chaldeans, without knowing nothing. The Lord says, go to the land. He didn't say, go to the land that I'm showing you in this brochure. Look, you see how beautiful it is? No. Say, go to the land. The land, I'm, I'm, what land, which land? You just go. But with the spice in the, in the portion of today, he, I mean they, they want just to know before. They just want to make sure, you know, without leaving nothing, you know. I just want to make sure. That's the different attitude. The idealism is totally different. In these two stories, in the, old, in the other hand, we have the 12 spies. They only want to taste, to prove if, if it's true, and to obey, and then obey. First taste, first see if it's true, and then I will obey. What a faith. But with Abraham, Abraham, he just obeyed. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, you will find that those uh, words right there. Now the Lord has said to Abraham, Lech. Lecha, your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. That's the word that the Lord gave me to come here. I was working in my country full time in the ministry, 11 years ministry, everything almost running by itself. Everything was good. You know, when you start, it's the hard work, and then you, you have a lot of people, the people help you. And then the Lord tell me, told me, Lech Lecha. Lech Lecha? Where? The United States. Ah, they're not going to give me the visa. So I said, that's not possible. So I told my wife, let's go to the embassy. And at that time, to have a United States visa, you need to have money in the bank. And I have, like today, a missionary pocket <laughs> with nothing. So I, we were there, and uh, I was with the with the with the confidence that the failure confidence that you, I know that they're gonna they're not gonna give me. So I was uh, so we we're, were in the embassy. And so I told the Lord, if they gave me the visa, that would be the sign that you want for me to go to that country. So okay, so I was there, and they the consul said, okay, what's your name? My name is such and such. Ta ta ta. Um, what do you do? I'm a messianic pastor. Uh, you're a pastor. Uh, when have you ordained? I have been ordained at that time, like th two years ago. I mean, two years before I, I was that, because I was studying before that. And they say, oh, you're a pastor. Pastor of what? Messianic. What's that? And I start to explain to them, oh, what interesting. And why do you do this? And why you just talking about messianic in the Torah and the Torah? And they say, okay, we are here with the, with the visa thing. And then she opened the password of Adi, and she saw her picture and said, oh, what a cute. And then she opened the, the password of Jeremy. Oh, mm. welcome USA. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know what to feel, if, or happiness, or because I know what that means. Uh. <laughs> and, I say, and I say, can you say it again? Yeah, you're welcome USA. And I said, so I have the visa. She said, yes, go next. <laughs> So I was okay. So we, uh, I, so I, you know what I did? I was the same attitude of the spies. I said to Lila, let's go for vacation. 
one month just for vacation to see. So we came here and everything. And after that, we decided we were praying. And we start. okay, we, need to, we will need to, set, to sell some things in here, so the furniture, everything that we have. We sell everything in one day, almost in one day, in three days. Everything was like fast, everything. In, well, for the price that she, well, she's a very good seller. Anyway, so, <laughs> so, so we sell everything. And then I, I told the Lord, just give me another sign. <laughs> And then uh, we ask him for the tickets, and my, my mother-in-law says, okay, uh, I, I want to travel this, sh- this week. It was on Sunday. This, this week I want to travel. So that was one Shabbat, and pa- the pastor told me, okay, I want for you before you leave to teach, give a teaching to the community. So I was uh, I supposed to teach this parasha. I know, not this parasha, one parasha, any parasha, one parasha. And then my mother-in-law called me, no, it was impossible to find the tickets at that date, so you need to wait. I know you need to, one week before, you need to travel one week before because that's the only tickets that we have. So I said, okay. So I said, hey, pastor. He said, okay, teach one week before. And guess what was the parasha that week before? Shelach lecha. I know, lech lecha. When the Lord told Abraham, leave everything, that one. Get out of your country, <gasps> from your family, and from your father's house. Anyway, at that time, I didn't know my father. That was another. F- when I was here on vacation, I found my father. <laughs> Somebody called me from Colombia and said, hey, my, my, I, I didn't know my father. You know, I know my father t- uh, five years ago. So they called me, and that was another miracle. So the pastor says right there, hmm, this is from the Lord. You got to go. You have to go. But to go there to do what? I don't even speak English. I don't know only my mother-in-law. I don't know anybody there. To do what? To work with we? To who? Nothing. Just go. So the Lord kind of, boop. <laughs> so we get here. T- <laughs> and then we started, you know, the, the, the other, I will, I will share the testimony the other day. It's a big uh, miracle after miracle after miracle. And then. I, s- I start to attend uh, B.O.B. and everything, but I didn't tell Pastor Richard that I was a Hassan right there because I don't want to force things. But I don't know, it's, uh, maybe it was my mother-in-law. She said, he was working in a ministry right there in Colombia. I said, oh, get me in trouble again. Shalach <laughs> lecha. Living without knowing. That's faith. That's faith. Trusting in him. And what was the difference between Abraham and those spies? You know, the Lord commanded, the Lord gave to Abraham the land of Canaan. And Abraham was walking the land way before the Exodus. And then the next time when they went in Canaan was these people. But the difference was that Abraham has a real encounter with God. But you know what is, what is sad? That Abraham never saw the big power of God. Opening the sea, manna, water from rock. He just trusts. But these people, they, they saw open the sea in front of them. Food coming from sky, 100% organic, <laughs> kosher, you know, and they complain. You know what they say with the food? They say, this is too light, too light, because uh, the rabbi says that that food, they, their bodies absorb 100% of that, of that food. <sighs> so they say, this is too light. We want to go to the clown, you know, the big M. Ah. <laughs> we want to go there. <laughs> the Aliyah of Abraham is more connected with those men and women and their children who came to Israel after 1948. That's another story. That Aliyah was more like Abraham. They came to the desert. With nothing, just desert. After 1948, the, the, the creation of the state of Israel. 
they only have one deal, ideal in their life, to make the desert flourish. And they become um, the, one of the most agricultural power of the, of the world. They work hard. They, they, were bra- they were brave people. They said to believe in this country, it doesn't matter if you believe in God or not, you need to believe in miracles because here do happens. And they saw it. They saw when they tried to destroy the land and they s- surrounded by all of the armies and they defeat their enemies. They make this, that country in 60 years prosper than any other country. They develop technology, nanotechnology, agricultural, all of the technology. I was reading yesterday that Israel has now the most powerful fly in the world. Uh, fly force? Uh, Air force. <gasps> they say, what about, it? what about, you must say, well, what about United States? Yeah, Israel has more money. <gasps> yes. No, we have money. We have a lot of bills. Yeah, that's why you have bills. So what was the attitude with, what is the difference between these two people, between these spies? You know, they don't, want, they don't have the deal to come to, to Israel to make the desert flourish, to make the land. These spies in the time of Moses, they don't have that, they don't have that in mind. Even when they went there, and they were 40 days walking the land, and they get taste of the fruits, they caught in the valley of Eskol, they cut a, a cluster of grapes. And the Bible said that two men need to, to, I don't know if have you seen that picture. That's the, the logo of, of prosperity in Israel. <laughs> Actually, it's one of the logos of the foreign ministries, something. Have you seen that? Two men, you know, they said that the, the grapes were too big. It was a blessing. But they didn't see the blessing because the grape was big. They say, if these are the, the, the grapes, could you imagine those who eat that? <laughs> Always you will have that kind of people. The people that said, but, not you, Bob, just to your question. People that say, yeah, that's good. It's a good land. It's a good land. It's a fruit. It's beautiful. But, now what? But, and this is the typical attitude of a negative person. Bob says Bob not because he's a negative person, because he is a Jewish. He's my one to make questions, to formulate questions, okay? I just want to make clear that. <laughs> you know what they say? They say they are giants. They say that this land swallowed their inhabitants. Swallow? And the, the, the Midrash, the Talmud said that it was a, a plague that the Lord had sent before that was killing people. So that's, they say that that's, what they, that's why they say that. So the people of Israel complained before the Lord. And they only complained. They want to go back to Egypt. You know? Like that wife. I go back to, back to my mom's house. She was right about you now. <laughs> She wants to go back to Egypt. In Numbers chapter 13, verse 33, says, There we saw the giants. The descendants of Anak came from the giants. You know, what giant? Giants? Nephilim. Giants. And we were like grasshoppers. Oh, in our own sight. Well, if you believe that. And so we were in their sight. You know, the same conception that they have. The same way that you perceive yourself, in the same way the people are going to perceive you. And that is right. So the, this, is, this is a conclusion. We saw in our own side as growth cropper, and so the same, that's what we are reflecting. We have fear, they're going to smell our fear. And that's the same circumstance in every action, every area of your life, in every area of your life. I don't know if you have, a, a, there is, it was a show that I like with this guy that uh, deal with Doc, the Cesar Millan. I'm sorry, Cesar Milan. 
the dog whisper. And, and what he said, he said, the dog will smell your fear. And I said, hmm, that applies for people also. Every time, every place where you go and you are fear, you are in fear, the other person will perceive that. Every place where you go, if you go apply to, the, to a job, if you go to, with a client to sell something, do not go in fear. Do not go in fear. Trust. Trust that you can do it and you will do it. The Lord give you that ability. Numbers 13, 25. So, and says that they return from spite out the land after 40 days. There were 40 days right there and they returned. And they complained in that very day. According to a Midrash, you know Midrash is a Jewish interpretation, a Jewish study. They came back on the ninth of the ninth day of the fifth month, the month called Av. That means Tisha Be'av. And in that way, that was the same day that the people worshipped the golden calf, when they were worshipping the golden calf. It was the same, play, the same day when they complained before the Lord. That's what the Judaism says. That night Hashem saw by oath that the children of Israel will be scattered among the nations. And this is written in Psalm 106. says, Then they despised the pleasant land. They did not uh, believe his word, but complained in the tent, their tent, and did not heed the voice of the Lord. Next. To overthrow their descendants among the nation and to scatter them in the land. They don't obey. Well, that's, that's just the, the Judaism. Yes. But let me ask you this question. What are you going to think? That means that I'm almost both. No? What do you think if every time that something bad happens to you, happens in the same very day? What do you think about this? What are you going to think about that day? You're going to be scared. Well, that happened with the Jewish people with, the, with Tisha Be'av. Almost all of the big things. That day was therefore turned into a day of during which many sad things have happened to Jewish history. in Jewish history. Both temples were destroyed on that day. On that day, the final attempt to the Jewish to break away from Roman rule was crushed. In the year 135. On that day, the Jews were driven out of Spain in 1492. On that day, many other tragic events happened in the Jewish history. The 9th of Av, in Hebrew, Tisha B'Av, is a national day of fasting and mourning for the Jewish people. The prophet, however, promised that it will be, that, that day it will be turned into a day of joy. As is written in the book of Zechariah, chapter 8. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the fast of the fourth month, that's one, Tisha B'Av, the fourth month, the fast of the fifth, the fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth shall be joy and gladness and cheerful feast for the house of Judah, therefore love, truth, and peace. They say, it's like the Lord is tell, told us, after we complain because of the land, the Lord, the rabbi says, the Lord told us, ah, you are complaining for nothing? You are saying that the land, the land is not good? Now I'll give you every year a reason for complain. That was a big ay ay ay. That's, that's what has happened. Now, Rashi is one of the one of the most famous rabbis in in, in the Judaism. He makes connection between um, the story of Abraham getting into the land and the twelve spies getting into the land. In the book of Numbers, chapter thirteen, verse twenty-two and twenty-two, we find something interesting. It says, "So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin as far as Rehob." 
near the entrance of Hamat. Um, next, next. That's that's all. That's all what you have. Twenty-two. Okay. And they went up through the south and come to Hebron, 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 Ahiman, Sheshai, and Talmai. The descendants of Anak were there. Now Hebron, Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. Hmm. This is very interesting because in verse 22 it says, And they went up through the south. That means Vayalu Venegev is in is in Hebrew. And came to Hebron, and came to Hebron, that means Vayavo. Huh. Vayalu Vayavo. They said they went out and then they came down. He's talking about they. But in Hebrew, Vayalu says they went up, plural. And then when it says, they, went, uh, they came to Hebron, is singular. So all of them went the up, but only one person was in Hebron. Who was that person? That person was Caleb, or Caleb, Caleb, I don't know how you call it. Caleb. Caleb was the person who arrived to Hebron. He was thinking in Hebron first not in the giants. Now, what is the importance of Hebron? What is this city so important that even today the people of Israel wants to fight for that city because it's, it's not in, in 100% possession of, the, of uh, Israel. It's under possession of Palestine. What is the importance of Hebron? In Hebron is Machpelah. The place of the sepulchre of Abraham and his wife, uh, Isaac, Joseph. So it's to say that Caleb was connected with his real roots. The first person that the Lord gave the land, Abraham, was there. So by Caleb getting to the Hebron, is to get connected with the promise. Now we have the right of this land. This is our land. Caleb is the man that has the right intention in his heart. His name, Caleb, means uh, is wholehearted. Caleb is the is the right from the Hebrew words call, that means all or whole, and lev, that means heart. Caleb has a different attitude compared with the, his brothers, uh, the other spies. In the book of Numbers, chapter 14, verse 20, Let's uh, go to verse, um, okay, it says, Then the Lord says, I have a pardon according to your word, but truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord next. Because all these men who have been seen my glory, huh, and the same which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have put me into the test now these ten times, and have not heard my voice next. They certainly shall not see the land of which I swore by their fa uh, to their fathers, nor shall any of those who rejected me see it, but my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him and has followed me fully. I will bring him to the land where he went and his descendants shall inherit Hmm. Caleb has a different spirit. So Caleb received that land inheritance from Joshua. When they conquered the land, Joshua was the commander, and he gave to, to him the, the, the land. Joshua chapter 14, verse 6 says, Then the children of Judah came to Joshua at Gigal, and Caleb, the son of Jephune, the Kenesi, said to him, you shall know the word which the Lord said to Moshe, the man of God, concerning me uh, in Kadesh Barnea. Next. I was 40 years old. 40 years old. When Moses, servant of the Lord, sent me to Kadesh Barnea to spy the land. And I brought back word to him as I was in my heart. Next. 
So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has uh, trod shall be your inheritance. That's, that's to see if you're awake. Inheritance and or your children is forever because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. Next. There's no next. And now, behold, the Lord has, has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke to his word to Moses, while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now here I am in this day, 85 years old. 45 years after. And what he said, I'm too old. No, he said, I am as strong this day as when the day that Moses sent me, just as my strength was then. So now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Has the same attitude all the time, all the time. Now, therefore, give me this mountain which the Lord spoke that day. For you heard that in that, how they uh, am I, da, 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 da. Next. 13. And the name of Hebron formerly was Kiryat Arba. I'm sorry. Verse 13. And Yeshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Hefune, as an inheritance. Hebron became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Hefune, the Kenizzi, to this day, because he holy. holy Follow the Lord God of Israel. What a different car that, he, that Caleb has. But let me close with this. I have two questions for you and for me too. <laughs> what is the land that you want to possess? Every one of us has lands that we want to possess. Either your dreams, in your spiritual life, in your family, with your children, whatever. What is that land that you want to possess? Think in that. What is the land that I want to possess? What I want to possess? And that's question number two is, what kind of spirit do you have to possess it? Do you have spirit of fear? Do you think that you're never going to be there? Do you think that you don't uh, deserve to have a better life? Or do you, don't, do you don't think that you deserve to have that that you want? Do you have spirit of defeat? Or do you have the spirit of Caleb? The different spirit in you. May we have that different spirit always. May we be part of the solution and not the problem. Always. In your companies, in your universities, and your family. Bring solutions, not problems. Be part of the solution and not the problem. Give something. Something that for good. Aport, aport, aportar. Eh, aporta algo. <laughs> Give something. Contribute to something. Bring solutions, no problems. Are you acting with your mind, your heart, or with the mind and heart of Adonai? He says, I know the plans that I have for you. That there are plans for good. Like Caleb, act with the heart, the heart of Adonai. Amen? Let's pray. Avinu, our Father, Abba, thank you. You create us. You create us with many skills and abilities. And you know what we are able to do. As David, your servant, says that you know all my days when I was in the womb of my mother, every day of my life. 
And also you say through your prophet that you know the plans that we have, that you have for us. And that your plans are above us. Abba, let us and help us not to see the circumstances, but put our eyes in the eyes of Yeshua HaMashiach so we can walk upon the waters. Help us, Lord, to trust in you. It doesn't matter what circumstances we see out there. It doesn't matter what is happening. Help us to trust. To trust in you, Abba. You said that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of self-control and love and power. Whatever happens, Lord, help us to, 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 to not have fear in our lives. Because the fear tie our lives and create a tie in our lives and our heart. Help us to do not fear, Lord. Thank you, Abba. In the name of Yeshua. Amen.